Recently, I got the itch to make another RC boat. When I was 12, I made my third remote controlled boat. I made it from a sanded chunk of insulation foam and some duct tape. It worked pretty well, and the fact that it could get on plane and was fun to drive was really amazing to me. Nowadays though, I have access to 3D modeling and 3D printing. My goal for this boat is pretty simple, I just want it to be able to get on plane, be relatively stable, and not get caught on lake weeds and other stuff in the water. With my past in making airboats and these goals in mind, it made sense to make another air propeller driven watercraft. It's fast, can go in any depth of water, won't get tangled in weeds, and it's simple. There are no places that need to be sealed underwater like for a rotating prop shaft. Also, you can sort of drive these things anywhere. Straight off the water, across the sand, the grass, on snow, wherever. I landed on a 40 centimeter long hole that could be printed in two halves. ICA glued it together and then had the terrible idea to try fiberglassing it. I have little to no experience with fiberglass and I didn't watch any videos or read anything before going into this, so it went as expected. This is two whole days later after doing uh, the fiberglass on this thing and it is actually <laughs> insanely bad. Um, I must have gotten the ratios wrong or maybe it was the fact that this stuff's like five years old and it's been sitting in a basement. If I'd done more research, I would have cut it into pieces and been more meticulous about the way that I did it. But the alternative that I came up with, <laughs> packing tape. It works, it keeps the water out. I did a pretty thorough job. I put um, CA glue on all the corners. Yeah, packing tape instead of fiberglass. We're gonna see how this works. Moving away from that idea, I started assembling the steering components. The rudders are printed lying flat, split in two pieces, and later glued together for rigidity along their standing axis. One of them is controlled using a push rod setup from a servo which is mounted inside of the boat. I bought little rubber boots that I found on Amazon to flex with the control rod's motion and hopefully keep water out. The other rudder is turned using a linkage that bridges between the two rudders attached with M3 bolts. The motor is a 1200 kV D2835 Hobby HH motor that produces low speed and high torque. I chose a 6 inch prop with 4 inches of pitch to harness the power of the motor's torque. Next up here, I'm installing some little wooden tabs for the battery hatch with hot glue in each corner. I then installed the servo and soldered the XT60 connector onto the ESC. The last steps were just a few finishing touches, hooking up the electronics and making sure everything was sealed up watertight. I originally designed this hole to fit a 5200 milliamp hour 3 cell battery, but later realized that was far more than this little boat needed. It doesn't draw much power and only needs to run for about 10 minutes or so per charge, so that much capacity was just unnecessary. The bigger issue though was the weight. The battery made up most of the boat's mass, causing it to sit very low in the water when not on plane. A smaller, lighter pack would have been a much better choice overall. Before we get to the results, I'd like to quickly thank the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. Projects like the RC boat I'm working on in this video are a perfect application for PCBWay's services. They can make complex custom PCBs but also manufacture custom parts using CNC milling, injection molding, 3D printing, and several other methods. Every time I've previously used their services, I've always gotten high quality parts that were shipped in a very short period of time. If you want to take your own projects to the next level, then definitely consider using PCBWay. Thanks again, now back to testing out this boat. Something I noticed right away was that spray from the boat was getting hit by the propeller, especially when taking sharp corners. I attribute this to the fully rounded design of the hull, 
If there were a railing or a hard edge at the bottom sides or top sides, it would probably eliminate this problem and add better grip through maneuvers. Another thing that was clear was that the flat bottom design made the boat prone to hopping sideways if corners were taken too tightly. I pushed this a little harder later on, exaggerating the issue and almost flipping it. Again, some kind of rail or channel under the boat would probably help this issue out a lot. Circling back to my goals though, the simple boat performed as hoped. It got on plane, it was maneuverable, and it wasn't getting caught on stuff in the water, apart from when I accidentally drove it into things. Would I recommend someone else building this boat? Sure, but understand it is seriously underdeveloped. If you want to improve the design, the on shape is linked below, as well as Thingiverse files. I haven't had too much free time recently, but I've got my mind set on my next project, another RC car, but far more advanced than anything I've made before. Thanks a bunch if you've made it this far in the video, bye.